the authors do not have any financial interest in the subject matter of the film As an inquisitive child I was a big fan of the famous tell me why books to get answers to the most startling and mind boggling questions that I had in my mind however when I grew up and became a cataract surgeon I was looking into the explanations for some of the confusing and complicated concepts in ophthalmology one such concept was posterior corneal astigmatism Recent research has shown that the posterior surface of cornea may have a significant contribution to the total corneal astigmatism and if not considered while planning may result in undesirable outcomes following toric IUL implantation. However, there appears to be some lacunae in our understanding of this concept and hence in this video we try to find explanations to some questions about posterior corneal astigmatism which I was unable to find in any of the tell me why books the introduction of Baylor's nomogram and recently the Barrett Storic calculator were significant developments as they were shown to improve the predictability of toric IOLs after due consideration of the posterior corneal astigmatism Koch et al recently showed that in majority of the population the steep meridian on the posterior surface of the cornea is oriented vertically that is with the rule which on the contrary exerts an against the rule effect on the anterior cornea thus if the anterior surface has with the rule astigmatism the posterior against the rule tends to reduce it and if the anterior surface has against the rule astigmatism it adds to it therefore toric iol selection based on the anterior curvature alone would lead to an overcorrection in eyes with with the rule and an undercorrection in eyes with against the rule astigmatism on the front surface hence the baylor's nomogram and barrett toric calculator recommend using a toric iol of less toricity in with the rule and higher toricity in against the rule eyes for optimal outcomes now the first question we would be addressing is why does the posterior cornea exert an against the rule effect on the anterior cornea in spite of the vertical orientation of its steep meridian it is evident in these topographies that irrespective of the anterior astigmatism being vertical horizontal or oblique the posterior astigmatism is oriented vertically this finding has been consistently observed by various authors using different tomographic devices now according to the explanation provided in literature since the posterior surface is a negative lens it subtracts more power from the steeper vertical meridian making it weaker and relatively increasing the power in the flatter horizontal meridian as a result of which a net against the rule effect is created however in addition to this two other factors also appear to contribute to the against the rule effect of the posterior cornea which have not received much attention previously the first factor is variation in the peripheral corneal thickness a recent study highlighted that the vertical meridian of the cornea was thicker than the horizontal with the mean peripheral corneal thickness being highest in the superior region to verify this limbus to limbus corneal thickness was measured in 100 individuals using a spectral domain anterior segment oct mean corneal thickness in the vertical meridian was found to be about 30 microns thicker than the horizontal and the difference was statistically significant this was observed consistently in eyes with anterior with the rule against the rule and oblique astigmatism this would imply that in the vertical meridian the curvature changes at a faster rate due to a rapid change in the corneal thickness from center to periphery thus increasing its toricity compared to a thinner peripheral cornea the second factor is variation in the corneal diameter 25 cadaver eyes were subjected to measurement of vertical and horizontal diameters on the posterior surface using a digital caliper results showed that the mean vertical diameter was significantly more than the horizontal diameter hence as the diameter increases in the vertical meridian its sagittal height also increases correspondingly thus making it steeper compared to the horizontal meridian now since both these factors may vary between individuals 
This may also explain the wide variation in the magnitude of posterior astigmatism which may vary anywhere between 0.26 to 0.78 diopters. Coming to our next question. Why should there be a difference in the vertical and horizontal posterior diameters? To understand this, let us go back to the embryology of the eye wherein we propose a cast mold theory to explain the origin of the cornea. Around the 33rd day of gestation, the overlying surface ectoderm or future epithelium appears to mirror the shape of the developing lens vesicle which is round in shape at this time. Later, around the 7th week, the differentiating endothelial layer was also shown to lie in close proximity to the anterior surface of the lens which by this time acquires its biconvex ellipsoid shape. Here, the lens surface acts as a cast and the posterior corneal layers as a mold. This also corroborates with the sulcus to sulcus measurements which have been shown to be more in the vertical compared to the horizontal meridian. Indirect evidence of the theory comes from the type 2 Peters anomaly in which there is a failure of separation of lens from the cornea leading to keratolenticular adhesions and corneal edema at birth. Thus, both the factors that is increased peripheral thickness and increased diameter in the vertical meridian when combined contribute in making the posterior cornea a comparatively stronger negative surface in the vertical meridian hence exerting an against the rule astigmatism on the anterior cornea. Last but not the least, why topography or tomography may not be ideal for measuring posterior corneal astigmatism? Modern tomographers, although are more precise than keratometry, however, are unable to measure peripheral thickness of the cornea beyond 8 to 9 mm, which may potentially lead to errors in estimating power of the posterior cornea. To summarize, it may be possible that the posterior corneal surface tends to exert an against the rule astigmatism, mainly due to the thickness and diameter being more in the vertical meridian. Hence, it may be important to consider the relative change in the corneal thickness and diameter for accurate estimation of the posterior corneal astigmatism. And, OCT-based tomographic measurements may guide us to develop new nomograms or formulae or improve the existing ones for better predictability with toric IOLs.